Hello everyone and welcome to my AD Carry lecture. Woo, thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Woo! <laughs> all single digits of you. Okay, so we got the outline today. So today we'll be going over a champion tier list, some runes, masteries, laning, item builds, your mid game and your late game, as well as a couple of common mistakes in the lower levels. Boom. So first of all, this is me. I'm a uh, Diamond 5. <laughs> Diamond 5 forever. I've been Diamond 5 for like two seasons. Sometimes I jump up, to, but I'm always Diamond 5. Um, yeah, okay, next slide, thanks. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get to my champion tier list. Next slide. Alrighty, so pretty much I've taken all these slides from Panther Dragon's videos. He's really good. Watch his videos, you want to see tier listings and weaknesses and stuff. Next slide. So pretty much he's got his own tier listing, and he ranks from like 5 to 1, and he has his own honorable mentions, so... Yeah, I don't agree with some of his stuff, but he's generally got good information. So Graves, I think Graves is pretty good right now. I'd rate him probably around third, third or fourth best. Like, um, he did get nerfed, I think, a little bit this patch. The slide's a bit wrong. I think it was the patch before. But yeah, it was only like a little bit of damage. But he's still really good. Huge burst, great AoE. Uh, he does get a bit tanky. The only problem is shortish range. It's not really that bad. I think for solo queue, he's really up there. Like, he's my most played this season, so I think he's really good for solo queue. Next one. So Vayne, uh, I disagree with this. I think Vayne's absolute trash. Uh, <laughs> she's all right, like coming into the tank meta because of all the tanks and percentage health, true damage, but her lane phase is really, really weak. And like I've played with probably two or three Vaynes. Like I've supported Vaynes in the past week and like every time they just do not do well in lane. And like solo queue, like there's just such a big advantage in that like lane phase. And like you've got to be a really good Vayne to pull Vayne off. And like most people aren't, so I'd say steer clear of Vayne unless you're like a Vayne only player and you're in like Challenger. But yeah, I did steer clear of her for solo queue. Next one. So Jinx, I think Jinx is actually really good for solo queue. She's probably number one or two. She, like I think three is a bit low for a solo queue. Like she's ridiculously good. She only falls down to assassins because assassins just destroy her because of her lack of mobility. Uh, but she has self peel and stuff. But yeah, she's pretty ridiculous. Like with her range and her AOE. She got nerfed in this patch with her ultimate, but it's not that much of a nerf in reality. Like, it still has the same damage once it's ramped up, like her ultimate. And it's only for, like, really short range ults, which you really shouldn't be using, like, on Jinx. Like, you always want a bit of different distance for your ult. And, like, it's mainly used in team fights too, to, like, do extra damage or, like, clean up. Uh, next one. So, Siva, um, I don't know. I'm not a fan of Siva. She is pretty good. I think she's better for fives than solo queue, honestly. I'd rate her down probably fourth or fifth. Um, but yeah, she does bring good push. She brings great uh, utility with her ultimate. Um, she does really good in wave clear. But yeah, she doesn't have as much damage as other ADCs, although she still does pretty, pretty good damage. But I think there are better options in that sense. So I think she's all right, but she's not one of my top ones. And Callista. Callista is ridiculously strong right now. Like, she's probably up there with like number one or number two. Like, she's ridiculous. And a good Callista just kind of like destroys you. Like if you die to Callista in lane, like your lane phase is so over. Like it's, it's just gone because she just, if she gets items, she's just ridiculous. You can't like fight her and she's got so much mobility. You can't like kite her down. It's, she's pretty unstoppable. The only problem is you got to kind of communicate with your support, which can be a bit hectic. But like with all her self peel and like mobility, she's really, really good. But she's kind of hard to play in the sense that you really need to nail her jumping mechanic which can be a bit like strange. Like if you jump the wrong way once, you can jump into like enemies and you die. So it's, it's a little bit harder to play in that aspect. But if you can play her really well, she's probably number one or number two right now that I'd say to climb solo queue with. And then honorable mentions. Uh, Draven, I think Draven is really, really good if you can play him. He brings ridiculous amounts of damage. It's just his axes, you know, like if you can't catch an, catch an axe on him like consistently and like in team fights, he does way less damage. So if you can like consistently micro those axes, He's just ridiculously unstoppable, but you just need to be able to nail that mechanic and be able to like attack move and animation cancel him. But he's absolutely a monster from bronze to gold. You can pretty much solo play Draven and just hard carry every game because people can't really, um, they don't know how to shut you down too much. And he's all about being shut down with CC because if you get stunned and you lose like your axes, you're pretty much useless. Next slide. And then we got Lucian, <laughs> also known as LeBron from Panzer Dragon. Um, I think Illusion's ridiculous right now. Like, I, I think he's really good. And even like in this meta, like, I think he does really well. 
for as long as you run like the tank uh, tank killer build, which is where you build Blade of the Ruined King on him just for his double taps with his passive. It's really ridiculously strong. Um, I had like an 80% win rate on him, uh, like in the games I started playing, because I haven't been playing him much this season. And I started playing him again, and he's actually really, really strong. Um, yeah, he's just his like lack of range hurts him a little bit, but if you can play him and you know his trade combos, he could be like ridiculous in lane. Next one. And Corky, I really like Corky, but I think he's falling down a bit now with all the tanks, and because he's, uh, he's kind of like burst magic user. Like, he fits well in, like, all AD comps still. Like, that's where he does really well because he does so much magic damage. And he got a nerf or two, like, two a patch ago. No, I think it was two or three patches ago now with his escape. His escape's really punishing now because if you make him burn that escape, it's, like, 100 mana, like, 80 to 100 mana. It's really ridiculous. And, like, it just shrinks your mana pool so much. And, like, his late game isn't too great. But he's still, he's still good. I'd still put him in my, like, uh, top seven list. So, yeah, it is good, but... I think there are still better like burst options really, unless you like got an AD comp and you want to bring magic damage in. Next one. So this is like my personal tier list. So I've kind of listed it as easy to play, and then champions that do lots of damage, and then like there's, they're kind of ranked in that order as well. So I think probably like your three best right now are, like Jinx, Graves, Lucian, because I think they're fairly easy to play, and they do like ridiculous amounts of damage. And then, like, on the right, you got your ones that do lots and lots of damage, but generally have some kind of mechanic that you need to be really good at in order to really excel with them. And then the ones on the left are just really easy to play. And you don't... They don't do, like, ridiculous amounts of damage, but they still do enough damage to be, like, pretty, pretty viable in this meta. Or, like, all right in this meta. They're probably not the best picks, but they are fairly easy to play if you do want to, like, pick ADC. Yep. Alrighty. So, ban. So... Bands right now, so pretty much for bands, I just check like low king really, and I just look at champions, and I generally look at ban rate because like right now you can pretty much say Sejuani, Hecarim, Gragas, they're like your top three bands, really solo queue, because they're like ridiculous tanks, and like if someone gets like one of those picks, it's so hard to kill them. I'd even warrant to put like Sion up there because he's pretty ridiculous. But yeah, like this, this is how like if I haven't played for a while, this is like what I kind of check to see like okay, what are people banning right now? And generally, you get like a decent idea, but like there's some things here you probably wouldn't ban. Although yeah, they're, they all kind of warrant a ban, really. Like they're all fairly good bans. But yeah, like so if, if I've been playing for a while, I got no idea what to ban. I just really check this. I look at I don't really look at win rate too much. I might like squeeze it win uh, win rate, but generally ban rates all right because you see what people are banning, and generally it gives you a good idea, but not the best idea. But yeah, and uh, next slide. Rune. So ADC, I pretty much take a standard rune page. Next slide. And it's just your physical marks, your armor seals, your MR glyphs, and your attack speed quints. So that's pretty much your standard ADC page. Like if you were to run one page for ADC, it would be this. Like that's pretty much everyone's running. You just get that little bit of extra attack speed, makes a nice little last hit, a little bit of extra damage for your abilities. And your armor and magic resist just help you be a bit more tanky in that early stage of the game, which is like when you're at your weakest, really. When the mastery is, then just your masteries. And yeah, this is pretty much your 21.9 page. There's certain variations that you can take and different things, and a lot of it's personal preference, but for as long as you're running something similar to this, you're pretty much doing what you, like, you're pretty much getting everything you need. Like, your nine in defense just to make you that bit tankier in the early game, just so you don't get, like, just so you can take, like, another water attack or two, make you that bit tankier. And then your offensive tree does look like this. There's certain variations. Some people like to pick up Warlord, get a little bit extra damage. Some people take uh, double-ended sword. Uh, double-edged sword, but it's all personal preference. A lot of pros dislike Warlord and double-edged, but it's really personal preference. For as long as you're taking, uh, well, there's no really like halves to take apart from like your final one in your tree, and like your attack speed one. Like they're all nice, and like, but like there's no real, real, like terrible bad ones unless you start specking towards like the mage and like you don't want to pick up the arcane blade that gives you the AP. Like that's terrible, but yeah. Just generally, like something like that. There are other variations where you take like uh, some points from the utility tree, but I don't like it very much. That's more for like your casters. Like if you want to play like Ezreal, Corky, and like spam a lot. But I still usually run this page on those guys because I think it's it's a pretty good standard page. Yep, ready here. So on to laning. So the whole point of laning phase is to just get you gold and just try to like deny your enemy gold. Like you just kind of want to be strong enough so you can come out of lane phase and go into the team fight stage to be, be stronger than the enemy. And like if you shut down your enemy ADC because he's not as good as you, and like you actually destroy him, 
through your lane mechanics, like that's a bonus. But it, that's, not, that's not always going to happen. So generally you aim to get CS over trades. Now, that does, it's, it's very hard to say like a blanket statement. Trading is a huge thing and you need to know how to trade to play. Uh, trading is really bad in bronze, silver, gold. It's, pe people can't trade very well. Like, they do trade, but it's, it's really bad and like really bad times. And yeah, so you only really want to trade when it's a good time to trade and you can win a really big trade too. Like you can get lots of little trades are nice too. But yeah, like lots, lots of other players don't trade correctly. And it's, it's probably like one of the biggest things for lane phase and why people lose lane in the lower levels like most of the time. And then don't take free damage. Yeah, so that comes with trading. So a lot of people just take free damage. So like they think, it's a lot of positioning too. Because they, they kind of think, oh, I just have to be here for my presence. And generally people take damage for that too. Like just like, just incorrect positioning, taking free damage. It's all lots of things you can abuse in lower levels because like everyone pretty much does it. And it's pretty much how you gain an advantage. Can we win a fight? And there's lots of questions I think that people don't ask themselves enough while they're in lane phase. So like, can we win a fight? Where is everyone else going to show up? Because like generally when you lane, a lot of people just kind of like sit there and they're like, okay, I'm just going to play reactive. Whatever happens, oh, this guy's here, I'm attacking him. Oh, he's trying to go on me, I'll go on him. And I think that's a real big problem that like people, like the people that um, aren't as experienced, um, no, not really, just like lower level players do. They just don't really like analyze every single aspect. They more kind of just play reactive. They're like, okay, I'm in this position. What can I do best thing from here? Which is all right, but it's not gonna like win you as many games as possible. You gotta think ahead. You gotta always be looking, what can I be doing? What's gonna happen? These are my options. How should I be trading against this guy? Can I win trades? What's my win goal? Like my um, win state or however I win this. <laughs> so that's, 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 I, think, I think that's the biggest thing that separates low level players and higher level players. A high level player kind of has an idea like what they have to be doing every second. I think lower level people just kind of react to whatever they can. And like in every situation, they think they're doing the best thing and they could be for that situation, but they're not really making a bigger plan. Like they're just kind of just winging it. We're like a high level player is kind of like, okay, I know what I need to do. I know how to do it. And they just kind of do that. And then controlling the wave is a really big thing too. It's not safe to push. Yeah, try to freeze when the last hits. So I've got a video on that or I've got someone's video on that. So can we go to that? Yeah. Yeah, so this is Fi. So Fi is really, really good. And that's pretty much how you need to control your waves and all that kind of jazz in order to give you a bit of an advantage. <clears throat> and that's a really big thing that isn't really done very well. Even in Diamond, like, you see people just push waves just randomly and, like, or they should be freezing. Like, it's really poorly done pretty much everywhere. And, yeah, it's just, like, how you establish an advantage, really. And next slide. So, yep, so that's Fi's video, and that's his link to it. And, yeah, I'll go over his, uh, some links later on, like, YouTubers and streamers that are really good to watch. So, into item builds. So, really, ADC doesn't have that much of a dynamic path to take. Pretty much every ADC can build very, very similar, similarly. And, like, standard builds right now, pretty much Infinity Edge, is pretty much rushed on, like, 75% of the ADCs. And then into Zerk Greaves, and, like, your Phantom Dance and Static Shiv. A lot of people ask, like, which one should you take? Really, it it's, it's really depends. Um, Phantom Dance is a better item in many aspects, but Static Shiv offers you many things that you kind of want. So a lot of pros right now are building, like, a BF Sword pickaxe, and then they're going for an Avarice Blade, which is kind of interesting. And what it does is, because you get extra gold from the Avarice Blade from farming and just gold over time, what they're doing is they're delaying that, like, first Infinity Edge spike, and they're just getting a bit more gold from the Avarice Blade. So when they finish Infinity Edge, they now have extra crit and extra gold too. So you're kind of that little bit stronger, like that little bit later in the game. So it gives you a much like, nicer spike, like a little bit later. So that's nice. A lot of like, players are doing that at the moment. But yeah, so like Static Shiv over Phantom Dancer, like it gives you better wave clear and stuff. And it gives you a little bit better burst. But Phantom Dancer offers you better damage uh, over time. Like over an extended battle, it gives you better because it's got better attack speed, better crit. But yeah, so realistically, they're very similar items. You can pretty much pick either one, but there's certain situations where you kind of want to go one over the other. Your third item is usually Last Whisper if they're starting to build lots of armor, otherwise Bloodthirster for extra damage. And then you can pick up the other one after that, or a defensive item. And then like, there's your Poe Champions too. They, they do a little bit of a different, uh, different build. Uh, Ezreal's a bit different, actually. Some people do crazy builds on him, so it's kind of like whatever you like. 
like Togmore and the Corky and stuff, usually you go to your Trinity Force for your early spikes with like your Sheens and your Phages, because those give you nice little early spikes. And then you can pretty much build into like Infinity Edge, Bloodthirst, the last whisper defensive item. And then yeah, there's, there's all your defensive items at the bottom there. Banshee's Veils, Guardian Angels, Scimitar, Randuins. Um, they're all pretty good, different situations you want to build them. Lots of personal preference really. Banshee's Veil is really good if they've got like huge AP assassins like LeBlanc or something. Guardian Angel if you're like, okay, well I know I'm going to die. So uh, I just want to be back in that fight. Uh, Skimitar if they've got like, like uh, long range CC or something you need to get out of. Sometimes against like a Zed maybe you might want to take uh, Skimitar just because you can cleanse his uh, ultimate. That's if you have good peel too. Like, if you don't like, if you have people that aren't going to peel for you, and he's just going to jump on you, you're going to die. Like, there's no point in taking QSS if you're going to die. You can always pick up something like a Guardian Angel. Um, Randuins is pretty good in some situations. I don't honestly build it like, at all. Like, I've heard that it's like a defensive item that some people take, but I, 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 I can't remember a game when I've taken it. But it's certainly an option, maybe. Righty, next one. And okay, this is the uh, slightly newer build. Lots of people have been playing on like Lucian, which is like Infinity Edge, Static Shiv, uh, your boots, your Blade of the Ruined King. So that's pretty much like your core, and then like, your like, last whisper af afterwards. And it works if you're kind of even or ahead. It's really good for killing like tanks, because you do a lot of burst, and like you do a bit of magic damage, you do lots of percentage, uh, current health. So it was really, really nice on Lucian. I've been playing it a bit. Uh, but you, I guess you can run on other people as well, but it's certainly really good for Lucian with his double tap. But yeah, it kind of struggles a little bit if you fall behind though. That's where it kind of, because if you build that like Blade of the Ruined King and then your last whisper, like you're waiting really late to get your armor penetration. And like if you're team fighting a lot, it can really hurt you. Yeah, next one. Uh, mid game. So a lot of people have no idea what to do in mid game. Like they just go bot, I guess. And just not really much happens for a while. So generally you want to get that mid turret. That's a really big thing if they have poor wave clear. Generally, you want to look for dragons and other, st and other stuff in the mid-game, and not just always just running bot again and again and again. A lot of people do that. Um, focusing, yeah, and maintaining, maintaining high farm and always be doing something. That's, that's a thing that I think kind of separates between like platinum and diamond and upwards. It's just kind of like always having a high GPM, like always doing something, always be farming something. I think a lot of people have a lot of dead time, especially low, the lower you go, more, the more dead time you have where you're just like, oh, I can't do anything right now. Like, there's always something to be done, and there's always some way you can like supplement your farm, like go take a creep, go push some lane or something. Like you never just want to be like sitting bot waiting for the enemy ADC to push their wave, and you wait like 45 seconds for T, so you get a, like a CS. It, that's really bad. You want to always be farming something. And, like a lot of higher players, like they have like ridiculous amounts of CS and just gold, and that just translates into power and just how strong they are. Yep, so next slide. So in the late game, uh, playing really safe is probably the most important thing. Uh, you got to stick with your teammates or you die. you got to wait for your initiators to go in, because if you try to initiate, you die. you got to do as much damage as you can before you die, if you are going to die. And you got to stay alive too, because if you don't die in a team fight, it can be the difference between winning a game and losing a game in the late game. Because the ADC has some of like, the highest push in the game, because they got lots of attack speed, lots of damage. So they can push really, really fast and really, really well. And if you die in a late game team fight, like in, in a, like a in team fight which you could have avoided your own death, like you can pretty much win a, like a game just from surviving through it. There's, it's really important that you don't die really in team fights. And initiating is a really big thing in low levels and just getting caught. Like you just always got to play safer back. You just kind of kind of be like, oh, I don't want to be in the front line. I'm just gonna just gonna stay back. You guys do what you do thing. And then then when you guys are all fighting, I'll jump in and then then we'll win the fight. That's that's how you kind of team fight. And like in this meta, it's really like huge tanks. So it's just like, you gotta wait for your tanks to hit their tanks and then they gotta start tanking each other. And you just gotta try to kill one of the tanks before he kills like your whole team. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not a great meta for ADCs right now. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's, you just gotta try to just kill, just kill tanks. That's it. <laughs> All right, next slide. So this is my common mistakes. This is like uh, the biggest things like bronze, silver. And I've played through Bronze Silver a couple times now. And I've had different accounts in Bronze Silver. And like trading is the biggest thing, I think, like to lanes. And creep trading is a huge thing. And retaliation trade, I think they're the two biggest things that if you kind of understand, you can pretty much get out of Bronze Silver, really. Because you can pretty much win 90% of your like, lanes just by creep trading and retaliation trading. So what is creep trading and what is retaliation trading? So creep trading 
is when someone's going for a CS, so enemy ADC are going for a CS, they're kind of stuck in that animation of they're still casting their auto attack. So what you do is when they can't do anything and they're auto attacking, you walk up and you hit them. And realistically, they shouldn't be able to retaliate, but that depends on the matchup, really. But yeah, so you pretty much get free damage off and then you back off as soon as that's done. So you've basically traded like a free auto attack off on them. And in the lower level, pretty much the enemy ADC will just back off, taking free damage, which is, you should never do that. So you have to retaliation trade. And this is what like beats retaliation uh, creep trading. So retaliation trading is just trading back. So if someone comes and hits you, you have to hit them back, or you take free damage, and you just eventually lose the lane because of that. So you have to trade back to like equal or like even greater. So if they come for an auto attack, it's like, let's say you're playing Lucian, you go, okay, auto attack Q, auto attack again. So you've out-traded them a lot, and then you kind of back off. And you've got to like be able to out-trade them. Otherwise, if you just keep, keep taking uh, free damage, you just eventually lose your lane. But yeah, so that's, that's like a, a little overview of trading. But it, it's, it's more complex than that. And it takes a lot of experience and just like kind of looking at like what you're doing. And it's kind of hard to see it at the time, but watching, like going back and like look, looking at what you did and how it played out, you can really see how you lose trades and stuff like that. But yeah, matchups, it changes everything. Matchup changes everything. So it's really hard to give you like a general overview, but you've generally just got to not take free damage. That's, that's the biggest thing. And always kind of out-trade them. So yeah, next one. And positioning and initiating. So this is really terrible pretty much everywhere for ADC. Like lots of people like frontline try to do a bit extra damage, poke down, but they always get initiated on it. And you pretty much die in team fights. Happens so many times. Yeah, if you die first in the fight, then you're either trying to initiate or you're positioning poorly, stay back, do your job, win the fight. So you have that like you just have your role and like you gotta do your role. And that's and that's like the most optimal way of you winning a fight. It's just by you being the ADC, staying back, waiting for the fight to break out, and then just doing your damage. That's your role, and that's like how you optimally apply yourself to it. And of course, you're not going to win like every team fight if you do that, but like you win more team fights by doing that. Next slide. So wasting time. This is a big thing. I think it's certainly for like uh, it applies to really everyone, really, and just wasting time and just not being optimal with your time. So you have to always be like farming, fighting, or pressuring something. Like 100% of the time, you should be all moving to doing one of those things. And you gotta do it as fast as possible because League of Legends is a game where you, your games generally go from like 20 minutes to like uh, 60 minutes. And that's pretty much all the time you get. And you gotta use that efficiently. So the more efficient you are, the better you can like get ahead. Because eventually, if it drags out to like an hour, everyone kind of catches up. But for like a 20 minute game, someone who plays the game really efficiently and optimally, they can be like two times, they can have two times as much gold as someone who doesn't. They just kind of like lazy around like, oh, I guess I could go bot right now. Oh, I'll just wait here. Uh, you lose a lot of time. And this is what separate, separates kind of, I guess, your platinum and your diamonds, really. Just like minimizing that amount of time that you're really not doing anything. And like, if you're waiting for that wave bot, you can always like rotate around, like go grab some jungle camps, go look at scuttle crabs. There's always like something you could always be doing. Like there should never be dead time. However, if your team's grouped, and then this is a big thing too that kind of happens. Like people fall into the rut as I've always got to be farming. And then what happens is you're farming bot lane and then your team fights and then everyone dies. So that's, that, that's kind of like a mistake that comes from trying to be as optimal as possible. So what you have to do is generally solo queue, people start grouping. And if they start grouping and like the enemy team starts grouping and you're bot, you've got to like run to your team. Like you should already have seen that and be running there because if they start a fight, which they 90% of the time they do, they don't really check who's there to fight. They just kind of see, oh, there's like three of us here. There's just four of them. Let's get them. Like they don't really like, go, oh no, we can't win this one. Like people just fight. So, and like, well, they get initiated on because the enemy team will see that you're bot lane farming. So if you see your team started grouping or the enemy team starts grouping, you have to go mid. Or like you have to like group with them. Otherwise, you guys will just lose a fight, and like if you do that enough times, you pretty much lose the game. So yeah, it's, it's something you have to be conscious of, but at the same time, you have to be as optimal as you can. Alrighty. Getting greedy. This is a big thing. It happens to everyone, really. This is a problem that stems from bronze five to uh, everywhere. Like, everywhere. <laughs> Trading kills for kills. It's generally bad to go kill for kill. Uh, unless you're kind of losing, then it's kind of good. But like, if you're going even and you trade kill kill, it's like uh, that's alright, but it's not great because you're kind of denying yourself in other aspects. 
because you're kind of like losing farm and losing other things. And like, if you're like dying, you lose a lot of time. And at that same time, the enemy mid laner, enemy top laner, they're scaling up. They're still like probably scaling just as well. And you kind of stop yourself for that bit. So now you're kind of less relevant in comparison to the other lanes. So it's, it's always kind of it's always kind of bad to go kill for kill unless you're really behind and you just need a gateway back in. Um, in the late game, it's terrible. You never want to get one one in the late game. Trying to be and trying to get too much in one push that happens a lot towards mid elos like gold and platinum. Uh, they generally just overstay and try to get too much from a single push, and like it ha it happens a lot. Like it also, it can happen at any elo really, but it's really common in uh, gold and platinum. Yeah, so like taking an inhibitor, people just kind of stay in mid. That's that's a really big one. That's a really common one. Like you'll go push, you'll take an inhib, and lots of people will just stay that mid. They're like, okay, we got presence here because we took it out an inhib. And it's like, yeah, but they're gonna all respawn and they're gonna come kill you all. And like, you usually throw that like huge advantage there. And then trying to take contestable barons and dragons, really big thing, happens a lot. So yeah, and you just always gotta be mindful that extra aggro you take from those creeps. Like it's it's huge in fights, especially if you get an aggro. Alrighty, and champ knowledge. Uh, lots of people just don't know how to play champions properly. Like and that happens everywhere. Even in diamond, you see people who are just terrible or like they're trying to. They're trying to play vain, but they just, they just they don't have any clue. And like, it's happening in Diamond, it happens everywhere. Like, generally, like, anyone can play a champion, but playing a champion well is two different things. And you have to really watch how pros are kind of playing them. And like, that changes too from like, even patch to patch, you can have like different play styles and how you gotta play that champion optimally. And the best way is to like, watch how pros are playing, read guides. Look at pro builds, that's more like uh, build paths and uh, skill orders and stuff. And yeah, you have to find out how they work and how to operate them in an optimal manner. And that's like, and that, and that can be a huge thing too. Like you can increase your damage from like just normal to like two times, three times, just by doing different combos. And it's, it's, there's lots of different things and it's too much to like, uh, like encapsulate in a, any one lecture. But yeah, it's just kind of something you have to always be mindful for. And just watching better players can really, it's like a big thing, because generally they'll do like Lucian combos, like on Lucian you can just E in, or you can W E at the same time, so you're already applying damage. So you've already thrown your W first, because it cancels the lag on your W, because your W has a huge lag on it, so you can W E in, do damage on that, then you auto attack, then you Q, and it cancels like, because the end of your Q also has kind of a lag on it, so you have to auto attack again. And like, if you're not doing any of these little techniques, you're probably doing about half the damage on Lucian. And like in a fight where you're like, oh, that guy lived by 100 health. It's like, that, that's a huge thing when you're doing like twice the amount of damage just by the order of your abilities. So yep, next one. And matchup knowledge. So this is, this is a big thing. And like, you never really have a full understanding of matchup knowledge. So I think every player really kind of has to always reevaluate because it kind of changes too, depending on patches, buffs, updates. They're generally like hard counters that like you always know, like your hard counters are like, oh, if he's playing Vayne, I'm playing Caitlyn, like the lane phase is not fun. Or if I'm playing, like Caitlyn is, like, probably the best example because she has so much range, so she pretty much wins like every lane phase really. Like I don't think there's any really bad matchups for her, like even people that can contest with her range, like they kind of have to scale up a bit, like Tristana Jinx. Um, there are some people with like better ranges like Ash and stuff, but Caitlyn pretty much like destroys in like a matchup, but that's just in the lane phase though. Like everyone else has different uh, uh, different scalings and stuff. But yeah, so to increase your matchup knowledge, generally it's just experience, guides, talking with other players, and analyzing the game. And discussion with other players is really it's really something you got to take with a grain of salt because if you're discussing with like your your friend who's not like that great at the game, he's like, oh yeah. Um, Caitlyn absolutely destroys Varus. It's like, all right, but if this guy is like, if he's if he's not like a really high level player, that's just kind of his own experience of the game. It's you can't always take it as like 100% true. It's like discussion with players is like, it kind of helps like form your opinion, but it should never be like taken as God's word. Just because my Silver Four friend said that the uh, Ash is absolutely destroys Jinx doesn't mean it's going to happen. You never know. Alrighty, next one. So yeah, okay, so pretty much that's the end of the content. I'm just gonna throw some links down. Just like decent people like uh, Fi, Robert X Lee, and Young Gooby. They're all ADC mains, and they all do like very regular uh, videos. Fi is really good. He does a lot of like different mechanics. Robert X Lee generally 
just for like uh, games. You can watch he like uh, explains his games, which is really really insightful. And young Gooby, he does more like montage videos, but occasionally he does. He does pretty good videos, but occasionally he does just um, uh, analysis, game analysis, which is really interesting too. And if you're trying to pick up a new champion, watching like a game analysis from like Robert X Lee or Young Gooby are really good because they show you like all, they tell you all the different like mechanics and stuff that you've got to kind of know that aren't really uh, surface level visible. And then Fit Panzer Dragon and Fox Drop are just two. They're actually jungle mains, but they do a lot of like uh, uh, everyone content. I think they're really good. Those are links. Check them. And then streamers, C9 Sneaky is probably my favorite. He's the dankest memer. <laughs> He's got the best C9 fanfics. But yeah, no, they're all just ADC streamers, really. I pretty much only watch streams if I'm like bored or I can't play League or something, and I just watch ADCs. Like, I don't really watch for entertainment value. I just, lock, I just watch more because they play ADC. And just generally watch how people kind of play things to a high level, because all these guys are either master or challenger or really high diamond. They've all been like master or challenger at least anyway, so anything they say is usually pretty accurate to a high level standard. And last slide. Oh no, websites, sorry. Yeah, and these are pretty much websites you should know if you're playing League. OC.op.gg is really good for stats and current game. I don't use LOL Nexus anymore, it's terrible for like in-game stuff. Uh, OC.op.gg is so much better. Pro builds, that's a mouthful. And pro builds is really good for your builds, your runes, your masteries and all that stuff. LOL Kings, all right. Uh, I don't use it as much anymore, but it's there. And just closing thoughts. Uh, yeah, just uh, just mindset really. Just uh, Always, always be playing to kind of have fun. Like, if you're not enjoying, and like you're playing like solo queue or something, and like you lose your last game, you're like, oh wow, I shouldn't have lost that. Uh, and like going into a game after that always affects you. Like, you might not even think it does, but it always does. And take a break if you lose, reflect. Yeah, that's that's another tip too. It's never good to like just spam rank, especially if you're losing a bunch. And always focus on improving yourself. Good luck, have fun. Thank you.